share a story with you first <laughs> as we move in. And I want you to imagine that I'm a teacher writing to a community far off somewhere and I help start many miles from where we are presently. And that community is arguing about the best talents, the best way of speaking, the best insights to have. And they desperately want to pronounce that they are each better than the other one, depending on the talents that they are expressing at any given time. And I might write them the following email. Esteemed beings of our interconnected reality, I wish to engage you on a matter of profound significance. And as we navigate the realms of existence, it becomes evident that the essence of our communication transcends mere linguistic language. Each expression has the potential to unveil insights, share wisdom, foretell futures, illuminate paths of understanding, even the most seemingly inanimate of instruments, like the flute or the harp, yield resonance. That resonance with purpose, providing clarity and direction. Consider the trumpet, whose uncertain sound leaves the listeners unprepared for the battles ahead. And just as clarity in communication is essential for readiness, so is clarity in our enthusiasm. When harnessed with clarity, enthusiasm becomes a beacon, guiding our collective endeavors toward a meaningful engagement. And in this vast tapestry of existence where myriad of languages and forms of expression abound, we must recognize the richness inherent in diversity. Each language, each form of expression carries its unique vibrational signature. Its melody is the symphony of existence. To exchange with a language unknown is to stand as strangers, seeking understanding and communication. Thus, as conscious participants in this grand community, let us cultivate the spiritual gifts bestowed upon us, ensuring enthusiasm is infused with clarity and purpose. Those who channel their enthusiasm through unfamiliar tongues are encouraged to seek the interpretation that bridges the gap between the worlds. For in the realm of spirit, where tongues may dance in ineffable rhythms, the heart's prayer finds resonance beyond the confines of understanding. May our enthusiasm be a conduit for unity. This force binds us in common purpose and may our expression reverberate that clarity of purpose, guiding us towards greater understanding and connection. Now, if you haven't figured it out yet, it's a reframing of Paul's words to the Corinthians in chapter 14. He was in a similar quandary. Communities all over the place bickering with each other. Who's the coolest? Depending on which talent they have. So if that were happening, it is happening today. What might Paul say? That's my little take on it. So if you could speak in tongues as what was one of the things they were arguing about and receive that inspiration, he's like, what difference does it make if nobody understands what's going on? And why are you taking on a talent that might not be yours to take on just because it sounds cool? So his correspondence Reminds us that enthusiasm and life and love and talents and interests are all okay. We don't need to have the specialness about that or what society terms is special, what our friend group thinks is special, or communities, or proclaiming in some fashion that what I can do 
is better than what you can do. So, because if we chase after what we think is the best, it's not genuine enthusiasm. But the wish for recognition and accolades, we're doing it so that we have something that comes back instead of from inside out. And we all have talents. Some of us call them gifts. I don't know that makes a difference. <laughs> Pick your word there. I prefer the word talents because the concept of talents is that they can be unique. And they're even more, they express more when they get combined with other talents. And if we're all talking about gifts, and we're, you know, sometimes we uh, want to just grab, grab the prettiest package. On the, the full moon days, um, full moon ceremonies, everybody brings some kind of little gift with them. And some people wrap them and some people don't. And they just leave them here. And it can be anything. It could be something that you picked up from nature. It could be something that you made. Um, one month I got a little collage that somebody made that ended up perfect. Um, I put it downstairs. But I've noticed the last few months when we do that part of the ceremony where we're just exchanging different, you know, different things to that the ones that are wrapped pretty are the ones that leave the pile first. Mm -hmm. Even if the thing that's out, you can see it because nobody wrapped it. Or I tend to put mine just in a little brown paper bag and fold it over and bring it. And almost always it's one of the last ones picked. Doesn't matter. I just find it, you know, it's just an observation, but kind of fits into what we're talking about. It's like, is it, are we just going by the looks of it and what we think the looks of it more than what's really inside? Because we're all individualized perspectives of creation and creator. We're conscious of that oneness and divinity and we share. And when we share those individualized talents and perspectives, we bring everybody up. Bring them up in the human perspective and the spiritual perspective. The universe also has perspectives of those that came before us. Ones that we will never know all their names. The teachers, the dreamers, the artists. It's all part of that collective. And when we realize that we can move into that part of our non-physical lives and draw inspiration from the inspirations and the talents of those that were here before us as well. It's all part of that tapestry of spirit. It depends on where we're at at present. Our experiences that we have growing up, our culture, our geographic location, our economic status, our education, friends we've been around family, the food we gravitate towards, the types of music and theater, books and stories, all of that interacts with our teachings, all of it, which means every single person is different on purpose because <laughs> no one person can have all the same of any of that. And then add that to your talents. Your talent may be organization, it may be math, art, plumbing, reading, synthesizing. We all have an aptitude for something. One may philosophize more about the material that they have an aptitude for, while somebody else may be the one that tinkers and, and builds from that same material. When you think about physicists and engineers, a lot of them are working from the same base of material, and yet they come up with very different ways of expressing it. My son um, is constantly, my youngest, constantly asking questions. I mean, like, you think it's a three year or a four year old thing, but no, this, this child still, he's 15 years old, and if we have 20 seconds together in the same room, there's a question. And it's just like, it's constant in his head, just these questions. 
which is great. It means he's curious about so many things, and I don't have the answers. No, Google does not satisfy every question that this child comes up with. They, there needs to be a motivation to follow up on those questions. And how we support each other in finding out where those questions lead for us. So in a school system, teachers and counselors try to take whatever questions somebody has and find them a pathway, which for this child is incredibly frustrating. Because to be told I have to pick one pathway just blows his mind even further because he's got so many questions about so many things. And he doesn't know. He doesn't know what path. And I wonder sometimes if that's what we try to do to each other even as adults. How? Well, they're kind of good at this, so we recognize that. I'm just going to put them on this path in my brain, and that's all it is. And in that enthusiasm, in that spark for wanting to know more, what if we just went about it a bit differently and realized that maybe his talent is in the curiosity of asking the questions? And then how do you find a way to find those answers? Because enthusiasm and zeal are a spark towards forward motion, not a spark towards a have to. It's momentum, it's winding an engine, it's continually feeding the fire to keep you warm and safe. It's momentum moving into wholeness and into healing, impacting our humanness into a place of resonance with our spiritual nature, with our one connection to God, our one connection to universal oneness. And our talents, no matter how we relate to them, Call us to explore that wonder and that beauty of the one, the beauty of the creator, the beauty of the universe, the beauty of you. And we don't all have to be on the same path for oneness. We don't have to be on the same path moving forward. Each talent is a unique way to understand and in that uniqueness, sometimes we're required to really pull in our enthusiasm in order to follow because maybe there's no clear path or maybe somebody had somewhat of the same idea and there's tiny little cracks that you think you can follow, but it's not quite, quite there. So are you willing to understand? Are you willing to do the work? Are you willing to explain your version of the language, your interpretation, your experience? And then listen to somebody else's experience, knowing they're trying to find the words in the path, just like you are. What are you passionate about? What do you like to do? What do you want to explore? That's enthusiasm. So in that reinterpretation of Corinthians that I opened with, the idea that one talent or one gift or one set of skills is better and more important than the other is squashed. Paul's like, get a grip on yourselves, people. <laughs> and I like his metaphor of speaking in different languages. I think even if we're speaking the same language, we're all speaking different languages. Depending on our talent depends on the people who will be interested in what you're doing. Also, depending on the talent will depend on how people are interpreting what you're doing. I mean, consider yourself, consider if you were an artist and you, you or, um, all your work got put into a museum and it's all on display. Now, it depends on the medium of the art, but consider just paintings for now for illustration purposes here. There's people that walk in there and that will want to be your students. People that will want to be your patrons and help you to have space to produce more. There are people that will just be in awe and just want to sit 
in that. And there'll be the negative critics as well. In those different languages of expression or ways we express ourselves, and they're noticed by everyone else. They can be appreciated or in alignment. They can also rub against somebody else. We can spark enthusiasm for someone to want to try a little bit of what you discovered. We can also spark enthusiasm that says, I can do it totally different and better, and that way doesn't fit me at all. We spark distinctive styles of talents and language when we're willing to share our own. Sometimes it turns into a passionate debate. Sometimes we come together uncomfortably. Maybe you are actually in the room while your art's being displayed and you hear somebody say, that is the worst piece of whatever I've ever seen in my life. Why would they even think that it's art to begin with? And we have a choice then. Do we have the discussion about the different points of view? Do we just decide that doesn't exist, that point of view? Do we let ourselves be uncomfortable to learn more both about ourselves and the people that we're listening around us? Sharing our perspectives and the rush that being, it's being on a roller coaster. It can be really, really fun sometimes. <laughs> it can be great anticipation as you're getting up to the top. But every time you get to the top and you get yourself displayed, you know, sometime or another, that roller coaster rushes down <laughs> and around. And sometimes we just hang on for the ride. There have been several studies in recent days or recent years about enthusiasm and its effects. And these key things come from um, an article called A Form of Self-Motivating Universal Force in the Eraser Review. And they say enthusiasm can lead to a better performance in ourselves and others. Enthusiasm is contagious. And we just talked about how it can be contagious for somebody wanting to collaborate and somebody else enthusiasm contagious that we want to try something different or another approach. Enthusiasm can lead to better mental health. The research shows that individuals who are enthusiastic about their lives and about moving forward do tend to have better mental health than those that are not and better physical health. And again, enthusiasm relates to creativity. And studies have shown that enthusiastic people are more creative and develop more original ideas. And also a creative approach to problem solving. What if the only thing worth manifesting in our lives was the enthusiasm for our talents? What if that's what manifestation is really all about? That unfolding, the developing, the sharing of our talents in the fullness of our very natures and whatever that nature is in the present. Would you choose anything different than what you're doing right now? Would you actively cultivate enthusiasm and expression for the talents you possess? Would you be curious enough to explore, expand, practice, develop, and share those talents with others? So zeal, enthusiasm, persistence, curiosity, better felt physical health benefits, and a chance to bring our human experience closer into an alignment with those talents of creation that are unfolding and inspired through divine intelligence.
Enthusiasm is an ability, a power, a tool to explore all that humanity has to offer. The energy that spirit may flow through us and as us and to us without fear or doubt. Knowing that we are worthy of the talents that we have. And it's exactly what the universe needs. And they are gorgeous, just as you are. Take a nice deep breath and pray with me, please. As an expression of our infinite source of creation, we stand united with all in recognizing our inherent divinity. In this sacred union, we affirm the power of our collective consciousness to manifest harmony and embrace the unfolding of divine grace in our reality. We declare that we are light. We radiate that pure essence of love and compassion. And from the depths of each of our beings, we feel divine energies. We feel them merging with me, surrounding and enveloping each of us. With each breath, we align ourselves with the universal flow of abundance and grace. We know nothing and no one is against us, not in our external or our internal worlds. We embrace the truth of interconnectedness, knowing that in unity we find strength, and together we stand as beacons of light. With unwavering faith and trust, we surrender to the internal divine guidance. We walk this earthly journey with grace and humility, knowing that we are eternally supported and held in the loving embrace of creation. And so it is. Thank you all for spending some time with me today and our light of enthusiasm. My name is Jen Shepard, and this has been The Nature of Healing. This podcast is produced by Bolts of Love. You may find me, Jen Shepard, at boltsoflove.com or Unity in Edinburgh, and that's unityinedinburgh.org. If you'd like to make comments about anything here or send questions or your stories, if you'd like to share your stories online during this time of the nature of healing, please reach out at boltsoflove at gmail.com. That's B-O-L-T-S-O-F-L-O-V-E at gmail.com. Take care, everyone, and enjoy this wonderful beautiful day.